Hi, Marie here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to share with you, uh, uh, I don't know, there's like 10 or 11 fragrances here that I really enjoy, but they suck as far as their performance is concerned. So I want to share those with you today. I hope that's something that you would enjoy. And if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. What are you waiting for? Join the weird, wonderful family. I would love to have you part of the community. And without further ado, Let's get into this. So, uh, yes, these are fragrances that I enjoy. Some I enjoy more than others. So I'm gonna start with, I think, my least favorite and work my way to my favorite fragrance. Uh, now these are underperformers. Uh, so for the most part, for me, that's longevity or it just goes to a skin scent right away. Okay, so um, the first one that I will share with you is my least favorite. Uh, and this is a major underperformer. It's the 4711 Aqua Colonial line, and this one is called Lemon and Ginger. Now, this one, like, I, I ended up buying three of these Aqua Colonia ones, and although they are all very refreshing and kind of zingy, um, the, the performance is so poor that I just didn't want all of them in my collection, so I, I got rid of two. Um, this one is exactly what it says, lemon and ginger. It's mouth-watering, it's a zingy, um, it's just sparkly lemon. Some people say it smells like lemon pledge. I happen to love lemon pledge, so I don't mind that. This to me, uh, you know, you're gonna get half an hour to an hour out of it. It is a cologne, so, you know, maybe that's part of it. But the longevity is just extremely abysmal on this one. Uh, but I do like the fragrance. So this one I would tend to use more as a room spray or I would use it uh, just getting out of the shower if I want to smell really just refreshed and, and uh, you know, fresh. Uh, this would be one I would reach for. Um, this one is also really great in the heat of summer, like if it's super duper hot. Uh, this one is just a, a wonderful scent. Like, I just find it extremely uplifting, slightly mouth-watering. The ginger is a bit spicy. So really nice fragrance, but just terrible in longevity. You're going to get about an hour max. The next underperformer is Elizabeth Arden's White Tea. And honestly, I have quite a few Elizabeth Arden fragrances in this collection, sadly. Um, they're they're uh, really very nice fragrances, but the Elizabeth Arden, if you're watching this video, please improve the longevity on your fragrances because they're great fragrances, but just really, really poor in the, the performance department. So Elizabeth Arden White Tea. To me, uh, white tea is very spa-like, so it's super relaxing. Again, this would be something that I would tend to wear in the summer only. Um, I haven't reached for this one a ton. Uh, it's, it is a very relaxing fragrance. It's slightly aquatic. Um, definitely get that tea note, uh, but it's very mild. This has sea notes, fern, mandarin orange, and clary sage in the opening. Uh, the middle notes are white tea, white iris, and mate. Uh, base notes are ambrette, uh, exotic woods, tonka bean, and amber. I mainly get that linear white tea aspect. Uh, it's a tea-like fragrance. It's very calming, very relaxing. Um, you're going to get max about two hours out of this, if you're lucky. One to two hours. So again, it doesn't last long. This would be a scent that I would tend to gravitate towards uh, for nighttime, like bedtime, uh, if I just wanted something really relaxing in the summertime. My next fragrance that I have for you is also an Elizabeth Arden fragrance, and it is Always Red Femme. Now this one, um, it's it's actually a really pretty fit fragrance, very feminine. Uh, you get some white florals, there's pear, there's um, cassis in here, and I definitely get that cassis. This reminds me a bit of the Armani C. Um, apparently Always Red, not the Always Red Femme, smells really, really similar. I think it's the cassis in this uh, that makes it similar. There's pear, cassis, and lemon in the opening. Uh, the middle notes are peach blossom, artemisia, jasmine, and lily of the valley. I'd say I'm getting more of that peach blossom and lily of the valley, not a whole lot of jasmine. 
uh, and then the base is vanilla, patchouli, moss, and cedar. Um, I don't really notice a whole lot of uh, woodiness or spiciness from the wood. This is mainly just kind of a light, airy, uh, sweeter fragrance uh, with light floral in it. It's very pleasant. Uh, it's not one I gravitate towards a lot because, again, the longevity is so poor. So I'm going to get maybe three hours out of this one. Uh, the projection isn't bad with this one. Uh, the sillage, you get a bit of sillage with this one, uh, but the longevity is just so poor. So um, it's okay while it lasts. Uh, it's not my favorite, but it's still quite a beautiful fragrance. Uh, if you have it, weigh in in the comments because, yeah. Like, and again, like, longevity isn't the be-all and end-all. So for some of these, I don't care if they're, lo like, long-lasting because I just really enjoy wearing them. So uh, this one, it's not my favorite fragrance, uh, but I do really enjoy it. But yeah, poor performance. The next poor performer, this is, now we're getting into the, I really love all of these fragrances. So the first three, eh, like they're okay. Uh, but these next ones, I just love them all. <laughs> so the first is Amethyst Lalique. Now, first of all, I love this bottle. Um, I love the detailing of the fruits on it. it looks like it's got blackberries. Um, the fragrance was not what I anticipated, but I love like it smells so refreshing to me. So uh, this is supposed to be a fruity floral. Um, I get fruits. A person anticipates massive sweetness with this one because you get black currant, blackberry, blueberry, mulberry, and big strawberry in the opening. So I'm anticipating this juicy bomb of deliciousness flying off in my nostrils, but instead uh, it's way more pared down. It smells like it's fruity but it smells like fruits that are just ripe uh, and you've picked a bunch of them and they've got leaves and stems and everything and you've muddled them up. Uh, that's kind of the fruit that you're getting. So without the sugar uh, for sure, but I still really enjoy it. I find it so invigorating. Uh, the middle notes are pepper, peony, rose, and ylang ylang, and the base is musk, woody no notes, and bourbon vanilla. Now, some people get a lot of bourbon vanilla from this one. I don't get any bourbon vanilla out of this. Uh, I wish that I did because I think that that would be really cool, but uh, I get mainly those fruits, uh, a bit of greenness, a bit of woodiness to this one. Uh, to me, this one smells like an Alban princess. I've said that before, so I just imagine uh, Arwen in the Lord of the Rings, and she's got that, you know, some sort of beautiful gauzy uh, medieval looking gown on with, you know, her long hair and her pointy ears. <laughs> and some sort of hood on too. Like you gotta have a hood on if you're an elven princess. But anyway, uh, she's walking through the woods barefoot. It's just rained. Her feet are f like kind of walking over moss and you can smell the forest and you can smell the the dampness of the the berries and everything all around you. That's what I get from this one. So it's a whole vibe for me. Uh, I love wearing it. It's just awesome. The longevity is about four hours on this one. So not terrible, but not uh, like I want mine to last me at least six. So this comes under the mark. Uh, the, it becomes a skin scent quite quickly on me. Um, as far as sillage is concerned, I'm not quite sure, um, but I really do enjoy this one. It's not for everyone because it smells, there's a slight maturity to this one. Uh, when I first smelt it, I was like, I, ugh, no. Uh, but then the more I smelt it, the more I just really enjoyed, I just enjoyed this one so much. Uh, what I notice is in the hot weather, you get a little bit more sweetness from that vanilla, I'm assuming, coming through. So I prefer this one in the hotter months. Now another one, this one is another Elizabeth Arden. It doesn't last long at all, but I just love them. And that is green tea, nectarine, blossom, any of the green tea ones. So I've got pear blossom, I've got... Uh, a pomegranate one. I think the pomegranate one is my favorite. Um, I love these like and they're so so affordable like they're like 14 bucks. That's the other thing about Elizabeth Arden fragrances. They, there's so many great offerings uh, but they're not pricey so if you want to buy them and give yourself some squirts uh, it's they're decent prices. The green tea line, um, I enjoy every one that I've smelled, like uh, some more than others. 
Um, they're just uplifting. They're, um, again, tea, a little bit spa-like. I like the fruitier ones, so I prefer these over the white tea. This would be a little bit more sophisticated, I guess, but I like the playfulness of the green tea ones. My favorite would be the pomegranate. Uh, next in line would be this nectarine blossom. This one comes across more peachy, uh, but they're all, you know, you get that tea vibe, like the green tea vibe. Uh, but then with that little bit of fruit. So these are really refreshing when it's really super duper hot outside. I don't want to put something heavy on. So I'd reach for something like this. This is going to give you about three hours. Uh, you know, it's mainly for me. Uh, it's not going to project massively. At least I don't find. Uh, but they're still really fun and they're so affordable. Like I think I got the, this size for six bucks. Uh, each one of them was six dollars and I think I paid 20 for the 100 mil or for the larger size but uh, great prices on them and they're definitely more elevated than your typical bath and body works body spray in my opinion uh, although those are great too <laughs> uh, these are really really pretty uh, but crappy longevity the next fragrance and this just kills me I, like I don't even want to say this because I've come to absolutely love this brand like so 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 much uh, but it's just the truth. It's Floral Street uh, uh, Wonderland Peony. So Floral Street has uh, like Ylang Ylang Espresso, you know, I am in, just in love with that fragrance. Um, oh, this is such a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Like, first of all, can we just take a moment to appreciate the packaging on this? I just think these bottles are absolutely gorgeous, like so, so beautiful. So love, love the packaging on these. Um, and, but the, and the scent is just, this is so uplifting. It's feminine, it's girly, it's flirty. It puts me in a happy mood literally every time I wear it. Very sweet. So Wonderland Peony, in the opening, it has guava red berries and Sicilian lemon. And I definitely get that tartness and a bit of that red berry. Although I think red berry also means pepper, like red peppers, but or peppercorns. But uh, I get more of a red berry, almost like a currant. Uh, with that lemon and then in the middle it has raspberry bloom, peony and violet. I don't notice the violet. I guess there's a little bit of a powdery aspect to this. Raspberry bloom, to me it just smells a little bit like raspberries. So I'm getting the raspberry and the peony is primarily what I get with a little bit of tartness from that fruit. And then the base notes are cotton candy, vanilla, resins, cedar, woody notes, and vetiver. So uh, this one, although it's sweet and girly and flirty and happy, um, as it dries down, you get a little bit of that, uh, you know, there's like more sweetness from the cotton candy, but then that vetiver and the cedar kind of grounds it. So I love wearing this fragrance, but it's about four hours. Like then it becomes a full, full on skin scent. If I go right in like this, I'm going to be able to smell it. But what I want is this to last a little longer. That said, I love this so much. I don't care that the performance is poor. Uh, you know, if I needed to reapply, I'd just bring it with me. I really, really enjoy this fragrance. It's definitely worth taking a sniff. I think most Sephora stores have it in store, uh, so definitely worth trying. And I've put a pretty good dent in it, if you can see. Now the next fragrance I have, um, I've talked about it a ton, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it's the Scent Private Accord for Her by Hugo Boss. Um, this one, to me, is just... <laughs> chocolate and orange. Uh, the other day I said sprinkled with powdered chocolate and then <laughs> pour orange juice on me. Not quite, but it's kind of like that. It's like a chocolate orange. Um, it's not, the, the orange is in the background, so it's not a super tart uh, orange, more warm, sweet, candied orange uh, would be more what I get out of this one. There's coffee in this one as well. I don't get that. The longevity on this is about four hours, but again, this then becomes a skin scent. I can smell it for a long time on my skin if I put my nose right up to it <laughs> like that. So uh, the longevity, yeah, four hours. Projection, media, like really, like 
quite light um, but it's so enjoyable to wear that I don't care and I wear it mainly as a bedtime fragrance so um, yeah I really really enjoy that first spray uh, I don't care about the longevity so much because I wear it as a bedtime fragrance primarily um, but it's just so yummy it's cozy it's a bit sensual because of the chocolate and it's not overpowering so this is a great fragrance for snuggling as well so yeah Hugo Bass the scent private accord for her terrible longevity beautiful fragrance the next one is just terrible for longevity again uh, three hours and that is Zara's rich warm addictive again this is a bedtime fragrance I'm always gonna have this in my collection like this one as much as I love it I don't know if I'd repurchase it because it was like about $80 uh, I've gone through about uh, like I've gone through about 40 mils uh, but it's 80 bucks and the longevity is poor so likely I wouldn't actually repurchase this because of the price this one however rich warm and addictive by Zara will always be in my collection now I have recently smelt the updated version I think I like that one better um, this is just rum and coconut to me I don't know what the notes are in but to me it's just a rum coconut I think there's supposedly honey in this one uh, it just smells so delectable it smells edible or drinkable <laughs> um, I think it's sweet and intoxicating um, I just love it the longevity like I said is terrible the projection is actually pretty decent on this um, but the it's it's so so good but projection you're gonna get maybe an hour max out of this and then it's a skin scent primarily uh, I get three hours and I can't really smell it at all on my skin anymore however this was 30 bucks and it's so good and I love wearing it so much to bed that this will always be in my collection now next fragrance I got this one um, last year uh, Lori gave it to me uh, she didn't like it at all and it's Dolce & Gabbana's light blue love is love now I like this one better than the original light blue um, the original light blue just wasn't for me uh, this made me appreciate fresh scents so before this one I wasn't really into them this one I just love I get like a major lemon in the opening this has similar DNA to the original light blue in the opening so you get granny smith apple lemon and red berries in the opening and then in the mid you get ice cream raspberry and jasmine uh, and then the base has whipped cream musk cedar and amber and so uh, to me this one oh, it's just so uplifting and invigorating uh, this one is cheery it reminds me of a raspberry sorbet I've said that before uh, it's got a little bit of creaminess from whipped cream or the ice cream but it's not super like I wouldn't consider this lactonic I'd, I'd consider it sorbet like so you you have more tartness than you have cream uh, but it's just so happy I love the raspberry in this one um, I love the way it dries down on my skin again as it dries down it gets a little warmer a little bit sweeter uh, you notice the uh, the milkiness a little bit more um, I get four hours max out of this one as well uh, so the longevity is really poor uh, but it's such a fun fragrance and for the summertime I don't I just don't care like I don't care if they last in fact I prefer ones that don't last long so this one or ones like this or even this um, I prefer them uh, in the summertime because I don't want something that's super duper heavy I want something that's light sparkling airy uh, and I don't mind reapplying I'd much rather have to do that than feel completely uh, grossed out by myself as the you know like I, I can remember I wore laundry D in the summertime I had such a bad headache by the end of the day because it was so overpowering in the heat like it just made me gag like I couldn't handle it so don't want anything like that for summer so these are honestly perfect the other thing that I'll say about this one is I noticed the florals in Wonderland Peony more in the summer and I noticed the sweet components more in the winter when I've worn this in the winter uh, so I'll just I'll just mention that because I, I I don't know if anyone else has noticed that but that's what I I feel 
Uh, but yeah, I really like this one. Okay, moving on. Last fragrance to share. Again, an Elizabeth Arden fragrance. This is one of my favorite fragrances, period. And it is Fifth Avenue Royale. Now this, I can't believe it, this was $14.99. Uh, I've talked about it recently, so I won't go into too much detail. Um, the more that I've sniffed this one, the more it it's not similar. Like, it's not the same. It's, I wouldn't consider it a dupe. But it's in the same vibe as a Noir Pour Femme. So it gives you that luxurious, kind of creamy, boozy... Uh, this has raspberry and some sort of liqueur in it, I think. There's suede in this one. So it's, it's I would say, unisex, uh, but quite sweet. There's a lactonic quality to this one somehow. Um, it's rich, luxurious, sexy. Uh, this one is just a stunner. It lasts, again, about four hours. Uh, but this one, like again, price, phenomenal. Uh, and I would just bring it along and respray if I needed to. Usually for evening fragrances too, I don't care if the longevity is fantastic uh, because, you know, you're only wearing it for the evening. So this is a beautiful kind of going out fragrance. It sticks a little closer to the skin. So, you know, if you were to go out someone may catch a whiff of you if you're walking by but more than likely they're going to smell you and go "Ooh, you smell good if they come in for a hug or something like that so that's when you would notice that it's a little bit more subtle but so so phenomenal it's rich decadent deliciousness sensual intoxicating love this fragrance so that is it these are my poor performers Love the fragrance, hate the performance, but uh, yeah, for the most part, I am really happy to have all of them in my collection. Actually, sniffing them has made me want to pull them out, although most of them are summer fragrances, but uh, yeah, I just, I love sniffing these ones. Like this, I find so refreshing. Anyway, uh, that is it. What are your poor performers? What are ones where you were like all excited about the fragrance and then you found out that it was just a dud as far as longevity. Leave it in the comments, warn us about them. Uh, again, sometimes it doesn't matter uh, because you really enjoy the fragrance, but for other ones, I wouldn't bother buying. Like, so these, like I was gifted this, but these I wouldn't repurchase. I wouldn't repurchase this one. They're just okay. Hugo Boss. Not sure I would repurchase because this one is pricey. So if it's got longevity issues, but it's not too pricey, um, you know, I'll consider buying it. This one, I don't know if I would buy it again. Uh, whereas this one, even though, ah, uh, I don't know if I would buy this one again either, uh, but I sure do enjoy it. The rest of them, uh, you know, they're, they're really rather affordable. Like all of these are super affordable fragrances. Uh, so I would have no problem purchasing them again. This one, I'm not sure about. This one was more pricey, um, but I enjoy wearing it so much. So yeah, we'll see what happens with this one. I likely wouldn't repurchase this one. Uh, so yeah, for longevity, if it's long, if it has longevity issues, but it's not a super pricey fragrance, don't care as much. But when it's pricey, eh, that, that's a little harder to swallow. So what about you? What are your, uh, you know, you're like, this is so amazing, but it's such a dud. Uh, and especially if they're pricey, let us know about them in the comments. Ward us, uh, give us some feedback. I'd love to hear it. And that's it. I hope that you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.